morning and welcome everyone to NATCO's conference call. Um, during this call, we may be making some forward-looking statements or statements about future events, and anything said on this call which reflects our outlook for the future must be reviewed in conjunction with the risks that the company faces. I'd like to state that the material of the call, except for the participant question, the property of NATCO and cannot be recorded or rebroadcast without NATCO's express written permission. So I'll begin with results highlight and then uh, an interactive QA session. Uh, we have uploaded the financials on our website as well. Hopefully you guys have seen it. Uh, to summarize, NATCO has recorded consolidated total revenue of 1,060.8 crores for the second quarter of FY24 that ended on September 30th, 2023, as against 452.6 crores for the same period last year, reflecting a growth of roughly 134%. The net profit for the period on a consolidated basis was 369 crores, as against 56.8 crores same period last year, showing a significant growth of over six-fold increase from the prior period. Company business was strong during the quarter due to growth in formulation exports and also increased sales in our domestic agro business. The rest of the business uh, is stable. Um, specific uh, segmental revenue split has been also shared. I will not go into the details. Uh, we'll open up the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. The first question is from the line of Somil Shah from Paras Investments. Please go ahead. Sir, congratulations on a good set of numbers. So, I wanted to know the impact of eight observations on our Kothur plant on our revenue for the current quarter. And by when we can clear these observations because it's almost a one month now. Sure. Um, the inspection happened in the month of October, as you are aware. So on November 8th, uh, we have responded. Uh, you were given 15 uh, working days to respond. So November 8th, uh, we have answered uh, the uh, given our uh, reply to the observations and our rectification and our remediation plan based on the observation. Uh, typically, what happens is it takes about 90 days for them to make a classification of the observation. So I think uh, so. 90 days starts from uh, November 8th. So, uh, so that's on the uh, FDA side. Uh, in terms of impact, uh, I think impact will be minimal uh, because I think the company has uh, always uh, done risk mitigation with their top products. As you're aware, I think all our top revenue items, our top five, six revenue items, are have an approval uh, from our Vizac side, in addition to the Hyderabad Kothur side. Lelinamide uh, also, which is the biggest revenue item, is also having approval from both Vizac and Hyderabad, uh, except for two strengths, which are two and a half milligram and 20 milligram, which is about seven percent of the total lelinamide. So even that also, we have done. Uh, the uh, the batches it's on stability, started stability. So we believe uh, if you do 90 days stability and, and so it's the procedure called CB30, if that is also done, then even that can be moved. Uh, that was already on the way, so we're, uh, so we're, that is also planned. Overall, I think our impact will be minimal, and uh, so I think let's wait for the classification of the uh, the uh, what is called of the inspection, and we'll make a decision. But as just as when we plan every project, I think we always have a, a two-side strategy for all our top filings. Okay. So even if this, I mean, currently since the observations are there, so the production has been moved to the other plant? No, the products are already being made in, uh, in, uh, in Vizac, most of the products. And some products have not been moved, but we already have approvals from Vizac. So it's a little bit of both. So some products we have approvals, but we are not moved. Some products we have approvals, we are making in Vizac. Okay. Okay. And so in the previous call, you did mention to achieve, uh, say, 1,000 to 1,200 crore profit for the current fiscal. So, but what would be the, uh, I mean, for next financial year, how much can it go? I don't think there will be much impact. I think I, I still stick to the same guidance. I think that range we'll able to achieve. I don't see a problem. And, okay. Okay. And for the next financial year, can we grow 20, 25% above this? Um, next financial year, we, I think it all depends on how the pricing environment is. I think we'll give more color to it, I think, closer to the end of the year. 
but we uh, were expecting that we should do well in the following uh, couple of years. I think that was uh, the general broad trajectory of the business. And uh, so I think, yeah, I think uh, we'll speak more in detail about the actual growth, I think, closer to the end of the year. But overall, I think, yeah, the, the impact will not will be minimal. Okay. Okay. And sir, there was recently there was some news article that even Aurobindo has entered in the uh, Revlimid uh, this uh, space. So how much that can impact uh, overall our business? Aurobindo has entered into what oncology business? Revlimid, you saying? Okay. Yeah. So I think a lot of players in Revlimid. There's already uh, it's all factored in. I think our earning projections assume the competition. So it's all factored in, my friend. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Yash Malhotra from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. In your last quarter presentation, there was a key molecule in your pipeline called semaglutide. Can you throw some color on its progress? Um, semaglutide, I mean, it's a good question you have asked. This was not filed in NATCO. It was filed from a CMO site. Okay, first question. Uh, to answer your first part of your question, uh, the review is ongoing. I mean, it's very early days at this time, so uh, I, I can't give you any update at this time. And our partner here is Viatris. Okay. And what steps are we as a company undertaking in order to have a better FDA track record henceforth? Um, I think we have uh, a good track record, and I think uh, we have, uh, you know, it's a, it, you know, GMP is a constant improvement process, and uh, you, you know, when observations come, you need to, you know, uh, you know, challenge, you know, take yourself to the next level and, and meet the regulator's expectation. I think, uh, I think we are engaged, and uh, we are cognizant of what is required, and I think we'll do what it takes to get it done. Sure. Thank you. Next caller, please. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Marcel. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello. Uh, yes. First of all, like we didn't find the PPT presentation for the Q2 result, neither in your website nor in the announcement of the presentation. So can you please make sure the next time this is the PPT submitted? Yeah, usually what we do is uh, within 24 hours after the board meeting we upload and we we usually incorporate certain questions that come from the call as well and we do it. So it will be done uh, within an hour or two after this call. No sir, actually what happens is 99% company uh, announce or like uh, upload the PPT prior to the call 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 so that the analyst investors can go through the PPT and can accordingly frame their questions and the avoidable question can also be avoided because, because a lot of answer we can find the PPT itself. So can you please ensure that, 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 that prior to this one, prior to the phone call, this is at least few hours before, uh, like this must be uploaded. No problem. Point yes, yes. I think we will take your uh, advice. Yeah. Thank you. Num number, like coming to the question, like uh, uh, yeah, in view of our key, like uh, yeah, like for example, key products. So like, uh, 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 how do you see the progress or like how do you see the growth in the in the, uh, in, in, the uh, in the current part of December, Vijayi September quarter? If you can just like uh, talk at least about three uh, three uh, key brands. Which product particularly, sir? Can you get, can you tell me exactly which product? Key products you're saying uh, uh, in the company's portfolio you're saying? So, like, for that, I need to open your this uh, like Q1 uh, PPT. I, I, I tell you which one are the important ones. I think we can run through them. Yeah, yeah the most important one, obviously, lelinamide is the biggest one. So, uh, lelinamide, I think, uh, you know, we have already uh, we don't have much quantity left for December. Most of it is sold. Uh, lelinamide will take off again starting from March. Uh, so, the, the December quarter will not be as strong as this quarter. Uh, and again, March things will pick up uh, and. Uh, Regarding other products, uh, I mean, Glatron is doing very well. I think it's very stable, and we'll see how th uh, things are. Uh, we have very good market share. And overall, our ROW uh, business, Brazil, Canada, is doing extremely well. So we are happy where we are progressing. Uh, our subsidiaries are doing almost uh, this quarter gross sale of 136 crores. So, and uh, they're all profitable, and we're doing well. So these are three major items that drive the earnings. And Agro has done extremely well. I think it's a business that we had almost very little turnover, and now this quarter we did almost 55 crores, 100 crores for the half year. So all business segments are doing well. Uh, in the, the, the core. So, so, 
So, like, we expect that, like, our financial performance during December Q will be a bit better than the September, or will it, like, be downward? It will, it will go, it will be not as strong. I already answered the question, sir. I, uh, what I said is it will not be as strong as September, because typically we don't have, because the agro season is not there, because uh, Karif is over. Second thing is uh, we don't have much, uh, you know, uh, uh, rev limit sale is not there so as much. So so basically it will be a little weak, but I think uh, things will pick up again for March quarter. Okay. And the last question that like, uh, do you feel, uh, like, like, do you see any 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 new product launch uh, during the uh, December quarter or the March quarter? Any big product launch is you're saying in the December March quarter? No, uh, any, any any new product launch? No, there are no big launches per se at this time. No, not in this next few months, no. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Next caller. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Dan Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks. Uh, Rajiv, uh, can you provide some uh, sense on uh, uh, you know, the growth outlook for the non-U.S. Uh, geographies for the next uh, couple of years. Uh, I mean, what could be the drivers, uh, you know, and, and any, any particular geography which is looking, which is looking particularly uh, uh, robust from a growth perspective? Um, in terms of Brazil and Canada are doing extremely well. Uh, I think, uh, it took me a minute, I'll just take out the numbers. So if you look at the last quarter specifically, I think Brazil has done 34 crores and Canada has done about 60, 61 crores. So these two segments have done very well. And uh, so we expect that these businesses will grow another 25% a year. That is, I think, the fun growth driver in the base business. Another growth driver has been the agro business, the business that we started. Oh, this one was zero. So last year, I think we did about 40 crores, and I think this year we're doing about 150, 160 crores. So a minimum to 200 crores. So I think these are the major drivers on the non-US business. And in terms of these geographies, uh, you talked about Canada and Brazil. Are there any major approvals which are possible, uh, likely over the, you know, which can, uh, which can have a meaningful impact on these uh, geographies from a revenue perspective over the next two, three years? I think the business is steady. I think it's ramping up very well. We have some approvals which are pending in the next one to one and a half year, which we are expecting. So next one, one and a half year, we are expecting good approvals. I think the benefit of that you'll see in the financial year 24, 25. I think nothing before 24 March that I can think of. But definitely in 24 to 25, we have some very good filings. We generally don't state the products because of the confidentiality nature of the business, uh, uh, because of the strategy. But I think we have some good launches lined up in the 24, 25. Thanks. And last one, on the R&D front, uh, any uh, any sense on, any color on any large filings uh, or big filings possible you've done this year or looking to do in the second half of the year? I mean, um, we are trying another two, three products. I think uh, we are trying for a few other FTS. Uh, they're all in the initial stage, but any of those filings will be happen on the financial year 24, 25, nothing in the next uh, four, five months. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Sagar Doshi from Fintuit Investment. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, so just wanted to ask, like, uh, we have a good uh, year-on-year -year growth, so specific uh, reason or drivers for it, and uh, what, so I don't want any guidance, but what's the sustainability of uh, the revenue or the profit jump that we have this year? So next year or uh, let's say in the next two years, will we be at least able to maintain this rate or uh, what would it be? That's the first one. Second is, uh, how dependent are we on rev limit? Uh, what is the total... Uh, the revenue that we get from it and the growth that drivers it. Um, I think, see, uh, you know, rev limit is important as for every other company. I think everybody's doing well with this product. Um, in terms of the uh, the growth in the next couple of years, again, it's all a function of the uh, the, uh, the general, uh, what it called, uh, price erosion. I think optimistically, I think it should do well for the next couple of years, 24, 25, and 26. But, uh, again, uh, you know, only we, only time will tell uh, and how market formation happens, but uh, that's our sense. Regarding, uh, you know, uh, our pipeline post rev limit, I mean, you know, we have, uh, you know, a lot of other big filings. I think we have spoken about them in the past. Um, you know, uh, I think semaglutide is one big filing that we have. Uh, I think, uh, and another uh, good product that we have uh, is uh, Ola Harris. So, I mean, and, you know, these are all products which are under review at this time. So, uh, 
So, uh, so we'll see how things go. Uh, but I, I think our sole FTF pipeline is in public domain. I mean, we have Bosantan, we have Carcel, uh, so we have uh, Irbutinev, so Adapitinev. So, I think these are all very good filings, and I think some of them are already approved, and uh, some of them are under review. So I think we are very clear uh, where the growth is going to come from, and uh, and I think uh, we have real uh, we have lined up our core manufacturing, and we also have a backup strategy for all manufacturing. I think company strategy has always been to have two sites for all important products. I think uh, this has been uh, ingrained in our system for the last five six years. Uh, so I think in that sense, I think I feel secure about the filings, and at the same time, I also feel that there there's a reasonable amount of upside in the future. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, just can you just tell me the percentage revenue limit contribute as on today? I didn't understand, my friend. Uh, can you say that one more time? I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. Uh, the revenue percentage that we generate from revenue limit sales as on today. Revenue percentage number. Revenue percentage generally we don't give sale numbers, my friend. I think generally we don't for competitive reasons. But you know, oh. uh, it is obviously it is impactful. I mean, I am not gonna uh, say it has a reasonable impact, but yeah, I think. Yeah. Perfect. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next topic. Next person, please. Thank you. The next question. The next question is from the line of Aman from Astute Investment Management. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good morning, sir. My first question is on our GLP one portfolio. So uh, you talked a little bit on the semiglutide side. Uh, if you can just uh, talk about will uh, the impact. Uh, of this product, will it happen in the next uh, two, three years, or do you think it is like five years away? And the more important question on this part is also: so there is this liraglutide opportunity that is coming sooner. So are we going to participate in this Victoza and Sanda opportunity? Sir? I don't have a filing on Victoza. So that's the easy answer. So we don't have a particip- we don't have a participation. I don't even have a filing. So I, I think we are not participating in Victoza. Semaglutide, uh, <coughs> it's early days, my friend. I think the review is in early days, the patentification is in early days. As you know, this is a very good product. It's done extremely well. You're aware of that. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think we're very excited about it whenever it actually happens. At this time, it will be very premature to give a timeline. I, I, I would refrain from doing that. I just I think once things yeah, develop, I think we'll, we'll give you some time to come in. Some sure. just, as, as of now, it's too premature. Sure. You, uh, you missed that part on the Saxenda. So on that, are we planning or have we filed? Which product? I'm sorry. Saxenda. Uh, Victoza, you said we are not doing liraglutide, but Saxenda. I don't know this product, my friend. I, it's not an algorithm. It's not that we have it's something that discuss. Uh, we only discuss yeah. semaglutide. We have done both uh, Ozempic and Vigovi. I think that's what that's what we have done. The both are both through uh, Vitrus uh, relationship only. Yeah, that's our, that, that we act as a partner on this product. Yes, In both the cases. Yes, that's correct. Absolutely correct. Sure. My second and final question is on Humaira, sir. Uh, is there any, given it is becoming off patent uh, just few months back? Uh, uh, my friend. I, these are, Humaira is not, you said Humaira, right? It's a monoclonal line. Yeah. It's not in our yes. line. Not in our okay. okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chetan Doshi. Please go ahead. Yeah. Congratulations for the good set of numbers. My question is that this agri business, you said it is a seasonal. So first uh, half you have done almost 100 crores. Uh, the question is how much it is contributing to net profits and what are your targets for the next financial year? Where we want to grow as far as this product line is concerned. I think we have a very good pipeline. So I think this year it will, we'll have some sale in the Rabi. So usually it's about 60 40 split. So I think 60% comes in Kharif and 40% comes in, uh, uh, Rabi. So I think, uh, so I think that's where we are. Um, this product, uh, this pro- profit right now is on the lower side. If earlier it was not profitable. Now it's profitable. It's on the lower side because we had a lot of high cost inventory from the earlier years, which we couldn't sell for a long time and finally we were able to get rid of it as we speak. I think the costing has gotten much better now. I think there's a good diverse set of raw metal suppliers. You'll see a very good uh, profit uh, run in the next year. I think that's what my expectation is. In terms of growth, I think we'll probably settle between 150 to 200 crores in this financial year. On that, I think we're targeting that we should grow compounded by another 25% in the following year, based on the pipeline that we have. 
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ketan Athavale from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. I just had one question. Is the current quarter EBITDA margin sustainable in the long run? I said, I've already answered the question. I'll repeat my answer one more time. I think uh, the current quarter uh, EBITDA will uh, not be as, the next quarter will not be as strong as the current quarter, but will pick up starting from March again. This was for the concern level, right? I'm sorry, sir. Yes. Yeah, 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 the control level. That's correct. Okay. Got it. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Oswal from Opal Industries. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, congratulations for a good number. Uh, please provide some colors on inorganic growth acquisition. Inorganic growth. Um, good question. I mean, uh, we're looking at opportunities all the time. Uh, so we are opening up subsidiaries in multiple countries. Uh, our cash has improved dramatically now. I think uh, as of December, I mean, uh, your the numbers are there and there, but I think we received a reasonable amount receivable. So as of October 31st, we have almost 1657 crores in cash or cash equivalent. And we have about 108 crores of foreign bill discounting borrowing. So net cash level, I think we're almost at 15.50. So I think our uh, cash load has increased. And going forward by end of the year also, I think it will go up uh, reasonably well. So I think we have the cash. We are looking at opportunities. I think uh, we're just trying to see what, what the right one is. But I think certainly I think we're looking at it. As of now, I don't have any uh, you know deployment plan. But yes, I think we're looking at different options. Uh, in antibiotic sectors? I'm sorry? In antibiotic sector? No, 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 not antibiotic. No, not in antibiotic. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yajash Mehta from Kotak Mahindra AMC. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, I uh, just wanted to know, obviously, you mentioned that the September quarter is expected to be weak. Uh, the December quarter is expected to be weak compared to the September quarter, and you'd be expecting a recovery in March. Uh, how do you see H2 post uh, Visovic 1 going forward? So could you say that I, I I understood most of it. I didn't understand the last sentence. Last question. Last. Could you say that one more time, please? The last so sentence. Yeah. So how do we look at the second half of the financial year uh, compared to what we've seen things? Uh, how we've seen things pan out for the first half of the financial? Year? I mean, I, I said December will be a little uh, uh, on the on the weaker side, and things will pick up March. I think we have given a guidance, you know, that I given a range guidance. I think our expectation that we'll do more than thousand between 1,000 to 1,200 crores of pack this year. Oh, thank you so much. Exact numbers and all, I mean, I, you know, I don't have a crystal ball with my friend. I, think I'm only, I can only make an estimate of how things are, uh, but I think that's our expectation. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank the you. next question is from the line of Somil Shah from Paras Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for allowing me a follow-up. Sir, as we know, there is a fixed percentage for revenue sales for each year that we can do. So, can we know for next year this percentage will be higher than the current year or it will be similar to the current year? It will increase much. It will increase. And uh, you know, any, any domain, I think it will increase to almost uh, by end of the term, it will increase to almost one third of the, uh, the total sale of the innovator. Uh, so, next year it, we can go up to one third. No, 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 by end of the term. By end of the term, it will go to one. Okay, and when is the end of the term? I think by the next, I think uh, by 26 March, I think, uh, 26 January, I think, you know, because yeah, 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 that's all right. Yeah. Okay. 2025 okay. ends. Okay, so, and currently, can we know, I mean, how much of that, I mean, if it goes to one third, currently we are at uh, a single digit, or how is it? I generally don't give that information, my friend. We generally don't give that. In the bond by confidence. Okay. That's all we know. Okay, and can we know this is the second year for this product for us? Yeah. Yes. Second yes. year? Okay. Okay, that's it from my side. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yash Malutra from GM Financial. Please go ahead. 
Uh, so if you could throw some light around uh, the volatility and litigations in the USA. As per my knowledge, you currently have another one in New Jersey filed yesterday. Which particular product? <clears throat> the same one, an antitrust case. And that we've already spoken, I think, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, we are defending our position and I think uh, we believe that the uh, lawsuits are without merit. Okay. okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hussein from Carnelian Capital. Please go ahead. I uh, just wanted to understand, uh, apart from CTPR, we have some other products in pipeline in the agro inside. So can you give some color on those products? Uh, generally, we don't give a pipeline until it is at a mature, uh, very, very close to a, a marketing approval. But we have a very good pipeline. We're expecting at least uh, two to three unique products uh, in the next uh, 12 to 18 months in the agro division. Uh, and secondly, uh, we were doing some relaunches of our product through a subsidiary dash. So, uh, any progress on that front, if you can some highlight on that? You are, you are, is your question that you have launched some older products through Dash Farm Critics, our own wholly owned subsidiary? Is that the question? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, we have launched, yes. We have launched some products. It's doing reasonably well, uh, but still, business is losing money at this time because it's still in early stage. That's the only subsidiary that loses money, otherwise all the other subs make money. But it's a journey, so it'll take at least one and a half, two years before it's set its turn. We just acquired it. So um, I think a lot of the pipeline that we have is, uh, you know, older pipeline. So it's not such a profitable portfolio. But I think over a period of time, I think we should be able to introduce new products and newer launches where it will uh, turn up. And uh, lastly, on the domestic front, uh, so on the onco side, how is the business changing up? Can you give some color on the overall domestic business? I think domestic has been stable. I think you look at it, I think we have done well. Uh, if you look at our half year numbers, I think we have grown around 10, 12%. So I think it's fairly stable. I think I'm happy where we're going. Uh, unfortunately, only missing pieces have been not done in acquisition, which we have been talking about. Valuations, but yeah. But otherwise, the business has been stable. Okay, got it. Thank you. That's the only question. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Marcel. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, just uh, going through this uh, current investment, we have a portfolio about 305 crore rupees and hardly about 20 crore rupees, 21 crore rupees only invested in the like, equity or the, the growth scheme of in mutual fund. Remaining our uh, almost you can say uh, 284 uh, crore rupees, which is more, uh, which is about you can say 80, uh, which is about 90 to 3 percent, is invested in the bonds or debenture, yielding hardly 8 percent return. You know that like our inflation is 7 percent plus 7 uh, like so uh, like uh, fetching 8 percent return is like nothing. So uh, and uh, if you also see this for example market perspective, even the uh, provident fund or the government provident fund or the PF trust, they are also like uh, allowing uh, up to 15% investment in the, uh, like you can say, market, uh, the equity oriented. So, yeah, like, uh, hello? No, let me ask you a question. No? Just don't, uh, so, our portfolio, I think let's understand what, what we have and what we don't have. See, what we have in India is most of it is invested in fixed deposits in banks and uh, financial institutions. Our average yield. Uh, is about, it depends on the tenure, but average yield is about 7.5 to 7.775. I think that's what the average yield for the India rupee deposits. But we also have cash in our offshore sub, which is giving a return of about 5 to 5.5 because dollars, dollars uh, deposits only give you that much. So I think that's the where the variation is coming from. I can assure you, I think this is probably the most conservative investments we have done and we have not, uh, you know, we are getting a reasonable return for the cash that is there. Uh, I think that's, I think that's, yeah, that's. No, 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 actually, sir, uh, the point is that currently we have invested only 7% in the growth oriented scheme, predominantly the sales of lower of 
what we are uh, like uh, suggesting that if you can increase this threshold say from 7% to 20% 15% in the equity because like the way the way the market is now booming and the way this like uh, india metro economy factor like it will be 7 trillion economy 10 to yeah, like trillion economy so i think equity is doing uh, like reasonably good very big and fast 22 to 25 percent return per annum so if you can so if you could consider like you know this uh, allocating uh, like bigger chunk for the equity i think uh, i will as uh, i say increase the uh, the stakeholder value uh, i understand, understand your question now i understand what you said see the thing is our equity exposure is very low i think our equity exposure is only 5 6% of our total cash uh, exposure uh lorets and all that because of the relationship we bought them at the ipo those shares have been there for many years uh um it's i mean our job is not to do equity stock market investment our job is to invest in uh, pharmaceutical research and pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing and pharmaceutical acquisition um, i think that's always what the uh, you know the uh, our mandate is uh, i think that's what we're looking at if you don't have a great idea we just put it in fixed deposit i think that's what we actually do I agree with what you're saying, but again, I, I also disagree with you because the mandate is very clear that it has to be invested in our core business, not in equity. Thank you. No, sir, I respect it, but like, let me just like add something more here. Uh, like the mandate, the mandate we respect. Only thing we are saying that, like, I'm not saying to go in the like, you know, this pure equity. We can go through the mutual fund growth scheme and and those are liquid also. Suppose, for example, if you have got any any target to uh, to acquire something. then this uh, investment in mutual fund can be liquidated within 3 days time maximum so like there is no like uh, issue that like uh, there is uh, uh, like there is no barrier that the that the funds will be blocked forever no so like uh, because the people point is that if you invest in equity growth scheme of mutual fund you will get uh, dividend also plus there is market is booming so we will get uh, like our nav will also be higher so if you could consider to invest through the mutual fund route wherein we we will not be you know bother day to day like about the market uh, like this uh, up and down just like just like let mutual fund work out so just we consider to have the to some more exposure in the mutual fund please Yes, sir. I think uh, we will consider what you said, and I think maybe we can consider uh, an exposure. But as of now, I think yeah, yeah. Let me. We'll just have a review, and then we'll come back with some thoughts. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rishikesh Patole from Bhatliwala and Karani Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Please go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so just uh, last year firm quarter was pure base business without revenue and even without the aggregate scale and we had reported margins in the range of around 30%. So is that is that the right way to look at the business ex of revenue? I mean yes and no I mean it's it's a very complicated question what you're asking when we have good revenue we also spend more on R&D as well right? so i mean we and when we have uh, you know uh, it i mean i i can't answer your question honestly i it all depends on see we budget based on our surpluses and we we plan our r&d investment based on that so um, so if you uh, and your r&d is uh, measured based on you know i i measure you know i take on my r&d cost vertical spend based on you know how the surplus is going to be so i honestly i can't answer your question my friend i don't know how to answer your question Thanks. Just to then follow. What what was the R and D number for Tokyo? Uh, I don't give for uh, quarter to quarter. Generally, like uh, last year, eight to ten percent. Eight to ten percent of revenue we spend on R and D. That's correct. Thanks. And that that would be the same trend going up. I think we're maintaining the same flow. Yes, correct. Yes, yeah, sure. That's it from me. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Next caller. The next question is from the line of Ketan Athawle from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I am uh, new to the company. So, can you just outline how have we doubled the margin percent uh, year on year? And you said that after, I mean, in Q4 we will pick up the margins again. So, will the margin sustain the subsequent years? Um, I think we have, we have spoken about it in the past. I think uh, I mean. short answer is that yes i think based on our product uh, launches and based on the uh, expectation of the price erosion yes i think that's we expect it to for the next uh, next couple of years based on the pipeline and we should able to hold up yes 
and how uh, what has uh, what has led to increase in margin over over last year QOQ? I think we had some good launches. I think we had a uh, subset doing well. Our agro business was doing well. Uh, I think uh, Revlim also has done well. So I think all of them together has, uh, has helped improve our margins. Okay, got it. And uh, this cyclicity was, uh, I mean, is this a seasonality uh, that the margins will go down in Q3 or is this only for this year? I mean, I'm, I can only, I can't talk about every year. I can only talk for this. I can only tell you what's happening in the next quarter. I think the gentleman asked, what, how will your Q3 be compared to Q2? And I, I think uh, we've, uh, we have said that Q3 will not be as strong as Q2, but however, things will pick up from Q4. I think that's, that's what we have said. And we have set, uh, and we have set the guidance for the year, and I think the number, I think we already set, that will be between 1000 to 1200 crores pack uh, is what we have set. I think that's what we'll end up with for the year. Oh, okay, so can you give pack guidance for next year or so? I, I don't want to give right now. I'll, I'll give you closer. I think I, if I have, I, let me see how the year goes, and I think closer to the uh, end of this financial, I think we'll speak about that. Yeah. Thank you. What? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Nikhil from SIMPL. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning uh, and congrats for a good set of numbers. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Yes, Nikhil. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, two uh, questions, uh, Raji. One is on the domestic piece. Now, uh, probably at the current run rate, we are back to where we were uh, three or four years back uh, when there was this price hit and everything which has impacted the domestic business. But in the interim, we had launched some more products and we had launched into, I think maybe if I'm not wrong, around 10 to 15 products we have launched. How do you see the domestic business growing organically for us from there? Like, would would it be more driven by uh, more new launches or do you think that the current launches or pipeline which is there in the market has seen to scale up? Uh, that is one. And second question, if you can uh, uh, spend some light on, see, uh, if you look at it, uh, since the limit revenue has started coming in, our R&D expenses have uh, increased significantly. And I know this R&D investment will basically help us uh, provide us a pipeline for future. But if you can just share, how should one understand this pipeline evolving? So, are, is it like, are there a large number of opportunities which are like a billion or a 500 million dollar kind of opportunities which we are targeting? Or are these opportunities where there would be needed for a clinical trial or such kind of opportunities? And once rev limit goes off, probably by FY2526, would this R&D spend uh, taper down significantly or how how do you think about the investment in the R&D over the next two, three years? Okay. Um, the way the business works is whatever money you make, let's start with the domestic. Uh, domestic is going reasonably well. I think organically our expectation that will grow around 8 to 10 percent. And if you're able to add an acquisition, then obviously there'll be a higher growth. Uh, regarding R&D money, I mean, without spending money on R&D, you cannot build a pipeline. And I think whatever the rich pipeline that we got uh, is because of the money that we spent. And I think good amount of surplus that we're generating, we put it back in R&D so that we can sustain for the future. And uh, I mean, our first files are already in public domain. So I think, you know, I, uh, so they have, you know, obviously the timeline, so when they'll actually happen, it all depends on the patient's case outcomes. Uh, so to answer your question, do we have a pipeline post 26? Yes, of course we have. And I think we have a lot of products. They'll all come at different times, but, uh, you know, we are excited about what we have. The question is, we have more ideas like, uh, you know, which are, which are highly valuable, which can give very large amount of revenues. The answer is yes. I think, see, I tell you, it's a very simple business in a certain sense. I mean, in, if you do four or five of these in the next seven, eight years, I think you're set. You don't have to deliver many of those. I mean, you can deliver three, four complex products. I think you're set. This business, more and more, again, this is my question. I believe it's a big thing right. Uh, at least three, four big things right. You're probably covering 50% of your data. I think uh, 
I, as of now, no, my friend. I, I can't answer your question at this time. I we look at different options. We have done a buyback. Uh, we have reduced equity by about two. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. And we have done given a reasonable amount of dividend. And I would like to say that our, you know, financial performance has been very strong. And uh, and you know, as I also said, you know, we have a good amount of cash in our books. The company is in pink, uh, pink of health. So. Um, Beyond that, I can't answer your question. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So, but I think you know, you just have to you know uh, articulate our position that this is what we're doing and this is the pipeline and this is how we're uh, you know going forward. Yeah, I think that's, that's all I can do. Yeah. And thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harish Swaminathan. Please go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rajiv. I really admire your. Uh, stewardship of this company and i'm very proud to be a very long term shareholder just two points uh, i wanted your view yes one relates to buyback and one relates to dividend yes now the last buyback was on the market method so long term shareholders didn't really benefit out of it though the equity capital came down so our holding became more powerful but the tender method would have been much more beneficial for long term shareholders because a you get the money b it is tax free and uh, c it is uh, very equitable uh, so uh, considering that you earn 7 to 8% on your 1600 crores and considering that you might not need that entire amount for a potential acquisition so in case you are considering any future buybacks particularly if you can uh, i meet with respect to this q3 seasonality so that people who are not really believing the company can of course uh, you know pay the price now the tender method of buyback uh, i feel could be considered many progressive companies are doing that including infosys and recently granules did it <coughs> so it's like a form of dividend but uh, it helps us number one and there is a time limit that is now over for you to consider the next buyback but i leave it to your better judgment and the second point is on uh, dividend now i understand that we want to uh, at some point even out this seasonality thing but you see the way we pay out dividend uh, we pay uh, much less dividend for uh, q2 and even less for q3 and very high for q1 because that's where your good revenues come in now one way would be uh, just my thought is to uh, as a as a as a measure of establishing our intent towards uh, removing the seasonality to look at the dividend in a more equitable or equalized manner because otherwise what happens is today many in the market think that nothing uh, positive shock is not going to come for the next three months so people trade in and out whereas uh, very long term uh, shareholders like us we bear the pain and we uh, we uh, uh, hope for a, a better tomorrow but we have also bear this pain because of the seasonality thing so these are my two thoughts and i once again want to put on the card my admiration for your integrity and the way you have uh, you know handled this entire piece uh, hats off to you thank you very much thank you sir thanks for your kind thoughts i will take both your suggestions under advisement i think in the future if at all we consider uh, you know a dividend payout uh, and or a buyback i will definitely uh, you know be on your suggestion and uh, will do what is right for the shareholders yeah okay thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Somil Shah from Paras Investments. Please go ahead, uh, sir. As you mentioned that uh, Q3 won't be as strong as Q2, but if we compare it as I mean Q3 to Q3 of previous year, I mean, can we expect growth in that terms? I don't want to answer that question, my friend. Let me just see how this quarter goes. So early to answer that question. Uh, I'll, I think I, I can't answer that question. I'm, I'm so sorry. I can't. Let me just see how the uh, so because I'm right halfway into the quarter, so I, I don't know how the orders will be booked, and uh, so I think so. Give me a little. Bit, I, I can't answer your question. I'm sorry. I, 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 I refrain from doing that I'm because it's too premature. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And and one more suggestion as the previous participant that I mean in future if we do a buyback, please do it through shareholder and so that shareholders could benefit and not through the open market route. Got it. Got it. I, I'll take that under advisement. Absolutely. Because in last five six years, I think our market cap has been stagnant, so shareholders yeah. have not benefited. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll I'll take that under advisement. Okay. 
Thank since you. we have so much of cash in hand and if we don't have any opportunity to you know uh, for acquisition then please go buy back in this day yes sir yes, yes, absolutely absolutely i'll take that advice thank you thank, thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ritesh oswal from opal industries please go ahead uh, thanks for the opportunity what's your view on uh, carbohydrate chemistry are we entering in this space on sir what chemistry carbohydrate chemistry are we entering I, in this i don't know i i don't i don't know what that means but i just i i just have a evaluation from a technical team i i we are not in not not a, i'm not a technical person my friend so i'm sorry you caught me off guard but uh, i i i'll just check what this means i i don't know what it means yeah. okay i will send you an email okay, okay fine okay. thanks so i'll take the last question for today yeah yeah, yeah. thank you As there are no further questions from the participant, I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Again, yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Thanks for your comments and thanks for your questions. And I appreciate the suggestions given. And uh, we will take that under advisement and when we make our next decisions. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good day. Yeah. Thank you all. Huh? Have a good day. Appreciate. On behalf of Bartliwal and Karani Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.